How's it going everyone? Andy from Free Skies here, and today I want to talk about using Copilot in areas that don't have Apple Maps 3D flyover data. So if we go to a location, in this case we're here at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, you'll notice immediately that if you try to tilt the, the pitch, the system limits you to around 25 degrees. So what, what we suggest is do not uh, adjust the pitch at all. Keep the pitch at that 90 and do your mission planning um, from a downward facing perspective. So if I wanted to do a mission flying over the main quadrangle and I, I have a nice open area here, there it's, it's difficult to see exactly where the quad will be positioned from the main screen. And we recognize that and want to make some changes to it. But you can um, see very precisely where you're at in the small 2D screen here. And you can ma manipulate that um, as such. To make it easier, we, re we highly recommend that you keep this screen oriented so that north is facing up. That way, when I move, it's a one-to-one -one movement on this uh, smaller 2D screen. If I were to orient north facing down, so now north is in this direction, the motion of the, uh, the where I'm placing this is inverted. So it can be slightly confusing as to how uh, it's being moved. Even more so if you're at not necessarily a, um, uh, you know, a, a cardinal direction like that. It can, it can become very, very difficult that way. So the, the easiest way to do these missions is to orient so that north is facing up, and then to navigate um, this way and see where you want to put your position. So you can pick uh, landmarks, intersections, things like this to, to place your waypoint. And you, you will see, again, where the, the drone's um, uh, heading will be facing. And that's shown by this, this blue uh, vision there. So it's the same way to design missions. Um, setting a keyframe will add that waypoint. So right now, uh, I'm, I'm looking straight down, I'm clearly above the, the 400 feet. Um, and we've added in a little functionality so that that isn't too much of a problem. I can go to that, that keyframe and instead of 628 uh, feet, I can go ahead and put in whatever altitude that I want. So let's say we want to do a flight out at 50 feet above ground level. I can set that, that altitude and you'll see that the, the drone height is now modified. Setting other keyframes, um, if we wanted to go down the south here, is the same way. Again, you'll always notice that um, that, that drone height is, is very, very high right now. Um, you'll also see that it doesn't give you the loading. It just, uh, once you hit that, please do know that it is loading, even if it doesn't show you that. So please wait um, five, uh, five to 15 seconds um, and see if that keyframe does show up um, and, and it, it should happen in this way, but it will not let you, you will not see that little loading screen. So please be aware of this. Again, every time you edit a keyframe, select it. You'll see that the blue box comes up, meaning that that keyframe is selected and that you are at that keyframe. While it is selected, you can always click out, but when you want to go back in and adjust that height, you can put in a manual height. Let's say I want to climb a little up to 70 feet. So that's the basic setup. Here you'll see it, it actually updates, and then boom, uh, you see the modified drone height there. Um, you can also edit the pitch angle. So um, for, for both, this is the Inspire, um, the pitch angle can vary between minus 90, which is straight down, to plus 30, which is 30 degrees above horizontal. Um, so I can, if I want to do a fully autonomous mission, I can go ahead and put in that pitch angle. Let's say I wanted to do something like 55 degrees. Um, and that's how, uh, that's how I can design those more full autonomous missions. Um, and it's, it's difficult. It's, it's a little bit difficult there. Let's see if, um, how that works. That looks good. So um, you'll notice, yeah, for the time being, it does not update in that, that pitch uh, box. Um, That'll be fixed pretty soon, but that, that's something for you to be aware of for the time being. So exact same uh, way, the, the drone will do this mission and will fly from point A to point B, um, 
And when I go to the FPV screen, I have the same choice of modes. I can do the A mode, P mode, C mode, or just fly in manual mode. And we really recommend for um, flying in 2D locations, if you wanna set in those specific pitch and bearing and height uh, positions, and um, that's how you, you would like to design a, uh, an autonomous mission, awesome, more power, power to you. Uh, we do, however, recommend um, using the camera mode because this, this is really the, the best way to get the most out of Copilot. You can design that, that, that same mission so that the drone will really do all of that flying for you, but now in camera mode, you can actually go and um, alter the camera direction as you're flying that mission and really focus on those smooth, steady pans and, and things of that nature. Now, it's very, very important in designing missions like this that you really walk the mission ahead of time and be aware of obstacles. So for instance, if I were to add a new keyframe on the other side of this building, and I set that, that altitude, I was at 70 feet at B, and I went, um, I set my C height here at 50 feet, and I, I, I manually set the, the position like that. As the drone went from B to C, if this building is greater than 50 feet, the drone will crash into the building. It does not um, understand in 2D where those objects are and it cannot avoid them. Um, it's, it's very, the, this, the, the experience is very much like DJI's ground station um, application for Phantom 2 Vision or um, 3D Robotics uh, tower application. So that's, that's the basics. Um, all, the other, the, all the other functionality is, is all the same. But we wanted to make sure that uh, all you guys understood that Copilot does work um, uh, anywhere that Apple has uh, 2D maps. And Apple has uh, this kind of data available in, in I would say, 99.9% .9 of, uh, or 99% of the countries out there. You can look out and see uh, on their actual um, maps features page, which we've um, linked a couple times on the Free Skies page, to check in real time where those, um, those uh, where that map data is. The other thing, if you just want to check uh, very quickly where um, where you can and can't fly, here's a little tip, uh, something that we've been um, using a lot lately. What I really like to do is go to my current location, and wherever I want to fly beforehand, I go to the eye here, I go to satellite, and I click 3D map. So any iOS device, iPhone, iPad, anything that has, this is Apple Maps. I can go into Apple Maps and as soon as I've hit 3D and satellite, I get that same view that Copilot gives me. So now I can go places and check by playing with that tilt to see if the 3D map data is available. Down here in Champaign, I see, yep, it's not available, but let's go up to, let's go to Chicago. And of course in Chicago, it's a, a major metropolitan area. It will have that, that 3D data. Now, um, a lot of folks have been saying, hey, well, I'm, I'm very much not allowed to fly in downtown Chicago, and there's places like in London and, and others where uh, flying in these areas is, is unadvisable, and it's unfortunate um, that you would need you know, a lot of special permissions to go there. But what we want to allow you to do is, yes, in, in downtown Chicago and, and in the Loop, we, we definitely advise you not to fly there. But if you're out in the suburbs, let's say you know, in Lincoln Park, in a uh, much less, um, populated area, you can see, um, get a nice uh, preview of where the edge of that 3D data is. Because Apple on that list will just tell you, yes, the city of Chicago is, but you'll notice I can go pretty far outside of the city of Chicago and still get that, that coverage. Um, and so it's, it's a really great way um, before you go fly to just go to your location see what the 3D maps data looks like, um, see where the, the boundaries of that data is, and I'll keep going here, um, and we'll really push and see how far. So I'm all the way up in, in Northwestern uh, by their campus, and I can continue going up uh, along the shore here. And it looks like, there we go. So that's where, this is, this is the boundary right there. So it goes from, uh, 3D maps to 2D. So that's a quick little tip for you guys. Hope this uh, answers a lot of questions. Uh, please keep posting to the Drone Zone if you have any more. Uh, that's uh, the forums page uh, on our website. 
And that's all for now. Uh, safe flying and uh, have a great week.